Hey everybody, I'm Dave with Family RV. Today we're gonna to be doing a basic walkthrough with the 2022 Travato 59G. So let's start with the power cord. So on the 59G Travato, on the driver's side, you're gonna see a power inlet labeled power cord. Your power cord will be stored somewhere inside the RV. You're simply gonna take this end Connect it in, twist the gray cap to screw it on tightly and secure. Next, you're gonna take the other end and plug it in at your campsite and make sure your breakers at the campsite are turned on. And one way to know that you're getting power from the campsite is go ahead and take a look inside the coach, look at the microwave. If the microwave lights are on, you're getting power. After you've connected your power cord, the next step you're gonna to wanna to do is probably hook up your sewer hose if your campsite is a full hookup, which includes electrical sewer and water. You're gonna find your sewer hose stored on the driver's side in the sewer hose storage. You're simply gonna turn this little lock down, open it up, and pull your hose out. After you're taking your sewer hose out of the storage, you're gonna to wanna to come to the driver rear to where the exit of the gray waste and the black waste are. You're gonna simply twist the cap off with the valves closed. You're gonna then hook up your sewer hose just like that. And you're gonna stretch your hose to your campsite's sewer inlet. Now, once this sewer hose is hooked up, you're gonna to wanna to leave the black and gray valves closed. You leave the black and gray valves closed until you reach to about two thirds or full. You'll be able to see that on your sensor, which we'll go over in a little bit. Now, once you are about two thirds or full, you're gonna to wanna to come out here. You're gonna to wanna to pull your black valve. It is labeled right here, black waste valve. Once this is finished draining, you can go ahead and pull your gray waste valve, which is gonna help flush out this hose. But after you pull the gray waste valve, you're gonna see a drain pump right here. This drain pump is to drain out the gray water. You will have to press this button to drain out all the gray water. You're gonna hold it until you hear all the gray water is out. Next, we're gonna go over the water supply for your 59G Travato. Water supply is located in the back of the unit. We're gonna take a look over here. Now you're gonna see a lot of configurations right here. However, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's got a little map up here of what each individual water supply is supposed to look like. So for, for example, dry camping. If you are dry camping and using your water pump, you're gonna simply wanna follow these instructions and use your water pump. To fill up your fresh water tank, you're gonna follow these instructions on how these guys should be set. So there's really only three maps you should follow. Dry camping, tank fill, and city water. Winterization and sanitize is for us to service. You shouldn't have to use those at all. You'll notice that there is a water pump right here, so you can turn on the water pump. And there's also a water supply right here with a quick connect hose, and let's take a look at that. That's gonna be stored right over here in this compartment where it's labeled spray hose storage. You'll simply be able to take this guy out, quick connect it to this guy, and that's it. You've got some water supply back here. Now this is good for rinsing off any kind of shoes, dirt, or whatnot. If you're at the beach, you can rinse off some sand and stuff. We'll go ahead and set that right there. Now for your city water supply, this white one water inlet right here is for your city water supply. Now, you cannot have your city water supply hooked up without leaving the door open. So what you normally do is you usually, if you have a water supply at your campsite, you'll simply take the hose provided, screw it on that water inlet nice and tight all the way. And you could actually, if you're gonna leave your door open, you can do the city water configuration. Now every RV has two sides to it. It has for dry camping and city water. City water is for when you're stationary at a campsite or at a home. Usually, you'll want to, if you want to shut the door, you'll just fill up your dry camping fresh water tank and then put it back on the desired 
dry camping configuration. And then you can detach your hose and you can actually shut your door. On your water configuration in the back, you're gonna notice a black tank flush. The inlet is black. So what this is, it's gonna help you flush out your black tank after you've dumped it. You're simply gonna take your hose. This is a one-way inlet. Make sure that's nice and tight. You're gonna actually make sure your black valve for the sewer is open. Now, make sure it's open because once it starts, once it's closed, it starts filling up your uh, black tank and it can if, go out the toilet if you're not paying attention and it can make a big mess. Now, what I usually do is I usually just put this guy on, verify water's coming out of the hose, and once the hose, uh, water, verify water's coming out, you should be good to go. Now, your tank sensors may read one third, two thirds, even after you dump it. That is normal with any RV. There's little sensors inside the black tank that sometimes get paper or any kind of debris stuck on them, and then when you return, we'll actually flush it out. All right, you're gonna notice as you walk into the entry door of the 59G Travato, where the handle is at, you're gonna actually see this little black circle right here. This actually pulls up and you have two outlets and two USB ports. Now the outlets will not work unless you're plugged in or unless the generator is on. However, the USB ports will run off the regular batteries and you can charge those as you're driving or whatnot. All right, so right above the entry door of the 59G Travato, you're gonna see a lot of configurations over here. So let's go over them step by step. Starting with this guy over here. It's labeled interior light. So this is an interior light for this cab right here. Now it is a three-way switch. So if you push it up, it'll go on, put it in the middle, it'll go off. And if you push it down, the light will get a little bit brighter. This next one right here is a power control system that we're not gonna really go over. This has nothing to do with anything of the coach. This is actually just for our service to take a look at. So just ignore this. The next one we're gonna look at is it says one place right here. So this is your control panel right here. You're gonna notice there's a generator set with the start and stop button. And there's also a meter to tell you how many hours are on the generator. There's also a water pump, tank levels, and your battery level. So let's start with the generator. To start the generator, you're just gonna actually hold this until it says starting. Hold it until the generator completely starts. It's really quiet. You're gonna leave it like that. Now, once the microwave beeps, then you know that the generator has its load on it and you can use that microwave or the air conditioning or whatnot. Remember, three things in this coach will not work unless you're plugged in or unless the generator's on. That is the air conditioning in the back, the microwave, or any outlets. You will need to be plugged in or the generator will be need to be on for you to use those functions. So, let's see how long it takes for the microwave to beep because it hasn't beeped yet. It's gonna take a couple minutes. Once that guy's set, then you'll know that you can use the microwave. All right. And that's how long it takes for the microwave to go on. Now we're just gonna shut it off and we're gonna move over to the tank levels. All right, so if you push this tank level button right here, it's gonna say fresh water tank, LP tank, gray waste tank, black waste tank. Each one on the side will tell you how much it's filled. For example, your fresh water tank right now is filled up to one third. Once it goes higher, it'll go up to two thirds and then it'll have an F on it for full. The LP gas tank right now is full. The gray waste tank is empty and the black waste tank is empty, okay? To turn on your water supply of your water pump with your water pump, now this is for only when you're dry camping. If you are hooked up to city water, the water pump is to remain off at all times. Always remember to turn the water pump off when you are not using it when you're on the road. For example, if somebody has to use the toilet, you're gonna turn the water pump on, use the toilet, and you're gonna come back over here and you're gonna turn the water pump back off. We don't want it running while nobody's using it, okay? Okay, so next we're gonna go over the control panel for the furnace and water heater controls. This is a Truma water heater and furnace control. So, all you're gonna do is simply push the dial in and you're gonna see a blinking RV. Now that's gonna be the furnace. The blinking RV is the furnace. To set the furnace, you're gonna actually press the dial again. It's gonna say off. To set the temperature you want it at, you're gonna simply move the dial to the temperature you want and then you're gonna select the dial again. That's gonna get the furnace rolling. 
Now the furnace is really, really quiet, but it is effective and it will get pretty warm in here. And so just adjust it to the temperature you need it at. Next is the water heater. So what we're gonna do is whenever you're using the water heater, if you are not hooked up to city water, you're gonna turn the water pump on first. We want the water pump on while we're heating up the water. So let's turn this water pump on. If you're hooked up to the city water, remember you don't need the water pump on. So for the hot water, we're gonna go back to the dial. We're gonna select it and we're gonna move over to the thermometer. There we go. We're gonna select it. It's gonna say off. We're actually gonna put it on hot. We're gonna select it and that's gonna be it. We're gonna turn it over here. Now you can use gas or electric, electric one or electric two, whichever you prefer. If you're dry camping, you're gonna put it on gas. Gas heats it up a little bit faster. And then we're gonna select it and you're good. Now let me backtrack a little bit for the furnace. Now after you select the temperature from the furnace, you actually press the button again and then you also move over to whether you want it on gas or electric. You're gonna select that, select whichever you want the furnace on, select it, and then you're actually gonna move over here to the fan to select how high you want the fan. Now, if you get an error code like this right here, that means you are probably on electric and you're not hooked up. That's telling you right there. So let's take a look. I put it on electric and we're not plugged in. We're gonna go backtrack to gas and select it. And this little exclamation point is gonna go off. There we go. All right, let's move on. So the next configuration we're gonna talk about here, this control is the inverter control. Now this inverter control, you simply to turn it on and wait for the beep. Once you hear the beep, then you know it's on. Now what the inverter control is for it is for functioning the television while you are on the road. Okay, so this inverter control needs to be on if you wanna watch TV or do um, any kind of stuff on the TV. Um, without that inverter control on, the TV will not work while you're on the road. If you are plugged in at a campsite, you do not need the inverter on. Okay, the next button above the entry door, you're gonna see an LP valve. This says on right now. This means we can get propane, we can light up our stove or use our heater. If you turn this off, you will get no propane to any kind of appliance that is using propane. Now this is for emergency purposes or sometimes people turn this off when they're at a gas station because it's kind of an open flame. And then as soon as you leave the, the gas station, you go ahead and turn it back on. Now if this is off, your fridge will start getting warm. The next button above the entry door you're going to see is a holding tank here. Now this is to heat up the holding tanks, the black and the gray, for when you're in freezing cold weather. If you're in California and it's summer, you do not need it. Alright, next we're going to talk about this TV and how to turn it on and how to program it, okay? So right now we're going to turn the TV on, so we're not plugged in, so we're going to come over here to the inverter. We're going to turn the inverter on. Now this TV in the 59G actually has a little strap right here that you can actually pull down and unlock the TV so you can swivel it to wherever you want. So let's get the remote control and we're gonna run through the TV. We're gonna power it on. Now we're gonna go to input. On the remote, we're gonna simply select TV. We're gonna search the channels over the air. After we've input it on TV, we're actually gonna go to menu on the remote control and we're going to scroll down to channel with the arrows we're actually going to go this way we're going to put it on air because we're just using the antenna we're going to go down to auto tuning and we're going to hit ok and select yes and that's going to start searching the channels with just the regular antenna on top now if you're at a campsite and you have some kind of cable hookup you're actually just going to go to the TV input. Let's go back. If you're hooked up to cable outside, you're going to go to input TV menu. We're going to scroll back down to channels, move the arrow over to signal type, and we're going to turn the signal type to cable. After we switch this to cable. We're gonna make sure our cable connection outside is hooked up. 
and then we're gonna auto tune it and start searching for channels. We do not provide any kind of coax cable. You'll have to bring your own coax cable. Okay, the 59G is also equipped with a sound bar. There's two remote controls in here. The little JBL remote control is for the sound bar. The sound bar is located right here above the table in the seats. Now to turn the sound bar on, you're actually just gonna power it on. And then you're gonna actually, let's say we wanna watch the sound bar with the TV. We're gonna hit the TV. Fund. And the sound and the bar is going to go on. Construction, okay. maintenance, and restoration of now let's say you housing. want to Bluetooth your phone to the sound bar. You could actually do that. All you're going to do is you're simply going to hit the Bluetooth button on the sound bar remote control. And you're actually going to search your phone and look for a JBL connection. And your phone should hook up to the sound bar. If you're going to watch cable, there's a little button up here. It's a little green light. The green light indicates that you're running off of the TV antenna. In order to search the TV cable on cable channels, that green light needs to be off. So remember to turn that green light off if you're using cable. This is not where you hook up your cable. Your cable inlet is on the outside, on the driver's side somewhere. And we'll take a look at that a little bit later. Okay, so let's talk about the rear passenger table that's behind the driver's seat. Now this table, can be removed and placed on the passenger side behind the driver's seat. However, if you do remove this table, remember to always have it secure in the proper brackets, either behind the driver's seat or the passenger seat. Don't leave it unattended and don't store it anywhere else. To take this table off to move it to the passenger side, you're simply gonna come over here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually twist this we're gonna push this button right here and we're gonna lift this table off gently. We're gonna set it right here, make sure you don't tear the, the seats. We're gonna come down to this guy right here. We're actually gonna push this down, push the button and we're gonna remove this bar. And we're gonna come on over here to the passenger side and we're gonna slide it right in there. And then we're gonna lock it back in place by twisting this and this is gonna secure this guy. Next, we're going to come back over here and we're going to put this guy back in here. And then we're also going to tighten it so it's secure also. And that's how you transfer the table from the driver's side to the passenger side. Now that we have a little bit more space over here. Uh, there's two seats in the back. We each have an over uh, shoulder seat belt. There are no child seat anchors on this guy. Let's take a look at these windows. Windows just snap right up. Open up the screen and get some fresh air. All the blinds will go up nice and easy. Be careful with these blinds, they're very delicate. So always make sure if you open up to close the blinds that this latch is always closed in. Right above uh, the passenger seats in the rear, you're gonna notice there are some lights. You simply push those guys on. All right. You're gonna notice there are some storage spaces up here. You can store whatever you need. Um, you can also store the window shades that we're gonna go over in just a little bit up here too. Uh, you have a little counter right here that actually flips up. And then you pull the two little tabs under here to push the counter space down. Over here, right behind the passenger rear seats, you got some more storage right here got your microwave right here you got a fan with the on and off button right here you simply just turn this guy and it's gonna open right up by itself there you go if you want to turn it off and close it you're gonna go ahead and close it like that now you always want this vent open while you're cooking if you're cooking inside you want that vent open uh, as well as this window side window right here open too for ventilation and stuff now you're gonna see some uh, labels throughout the coach uh, it tells you what the indicators are. There's a light switch under here for the stove. You got your water supply right here, sink. If you're not hooked up to city water, you'll need to turn the water pump on. If you're hooked up to city water, you're good. Stove is right here. Gonna go ahead and put this to light. You're gonna push and hold that guy and you're gonna hit ignite it just like that. And then turn it off. 
Make sure these burners are cooled down before you shut the glass top. It can shatter the glass if it's too hot down here. Over here, we have the fridge and the freezer, which is separate. We're gonna go ahead and open this and take a look over here. You do have a dial right here to set the temperature if you want it colder or warmer. These guys get pretty cold, so you can adjust it to whatever temperature you have your food for. All right. Over here, we have various different switches. We'll, they're labeled. These are all interior lights if you just shut them off like that. You got another water pump right here. This is the same water pump as the one up there on the board. It's just a different area, so you won't have to be running back to the board for that. Underneath the, uh, by the kitchen sink and the stove, you have another interior light that's labeled. You got a plug right here. Now, if anybody's using any curling irons, blow dryers, or if your breakers or your uh, outlets are not working, this is called a GFI reset button. You'll simply put this or you'll check your breakers. And let me show you where those breakers are at. Down over here under the bed, your labeled breakers are gonna simply unbutton this guy and it's gonna expose all the breakers and what it's labeled for. Right underneath the breakers are your fuse panel, which you simply just take this guy off. Pop that guy off and you have all your fuses there. Now we don't supply extra fuses. If you wanna take extra fuses, you can go down to the auto store and purchase some. Let's move up to here. You're gonna see a preheat and a normal. This is for your water heater. Now, you, if you wanna preheat the water, what this does, it actually preheats the water and actually puts it back in to your fresh water tank. I'm not gonna to get too technical with that. So what you kinda of do is just push that to preheat and you can just leave it on for like about 10 seconds at the most. After that's done, you push that back. Now, this is for when you are preheating your water heater. You just turn it right there. It's just a quick thing go back to normal let's move on to this bed let's put this bed down i'm going to swivel back over here we're going to see some posts right here this is for the outdoor curtain behind the coach i'm going to set these aside and we'll go over that just a little bit but i want to show you how to put the bed down let's set those right there to put the bed down you're actually going to see a seat belt buckle back here you just unclip that right there you're gonna grab these guys right here. There's some magnetic legs. You're gonna pull the legs out like this. You're actually gonna get out of the way first. You're gonna pull the legs down. The bed is gonna go down. Be careful with that right there. And then you're gonna simply pull the mattress down and the mattress is gonna stay down right there. Now let's break it down again. We're gonna push it back up. We're gonna be very careful not to scrape anything with these legs. magnet's gonna go right there. We're gonna push this guy back up. We're gonna look for the seat belt buckle that's behind here. And we're gonna buckle it back in and secure it. Up here we just have some storage space right here. It's pretty self-explanatory with this right here. Um, let's take a look at the bathroom. The bathroom is just a normal bathroom just like at your home. You're gonna notice right here on the shower thing, there is a water saver. So every time you turn on this water, it's gonna be continuously running. Now this is a water saver. You don't want your tanks filling up too fast. You don't want your fresh water going out so fast. So if you push this button, it stops the water. It's kind of a lather up, rinse off kind of shower and you're out. All right. To flush the toilet, you're gonna have a foot pedal down there. You simply just push that pedal down with your foot and it will flush the water. Over there, you're gonna see a sprayer. If you wanna use a sprayer to rinse out the toilet, you're gonna to have to hold the pedal down by your foot and that's gonna turn on the water. If the pedal's not pushed down, it will not work. Up here, you have a vent fan. You can just push this up and it opens up the vent and there is a little button right there for the fan. Always remember to turn this off when you're not using it and close it up. All right, let's move on to the next step. All right, let's talk about these poles that were stored underneath the bed. This post, you're gonna actually connect them like that. We're gonna put the pin inside to secure it. This pole 
actually has two connections right here. So to put this pole in, you kind of just push this little spring back. It'll connect it right here. And then it goes to the next one over here. Kind of pull this little screen back right here. It'll hook in right here, like so. Now underneath here where your water supply is at, you're gonna see a little buttoned up thing right here. Behind this guy is actually a curtain that you could actually hang up here. And you just Velcro it on. There's got some Velcro straps on here, I believe. Open it right up. The Velcro straps are right here. You'll just kind of go like this. Now this just adds a little bit more privacy for the back. If you want to take an outdoor shower, it's kind of what it's for. There's a button. Velcro them all up, and you'll see that you have a little bit more privacy if you want to leave the doors open for air. For this curtain for the back doors, you'll actually notice there is an air compressor back here and also a jack. However, this unit is not equipped with the spare tire, so you'll have to call roadside assistance or something to help you out with that. Now this compartment right here is where you're gonna find your water hose. Your water hose will be right here. It's a little bit of storage, but that's where it's, that's where it's gonna go. All right, we're gonna go over the awning configurations and the buttons right here at the entry door, um, right, right above the uh, fire extinguisher. You're gonna notice several buttons right here. One is for awning at, in and out. The next one is for the awning lights on and off. And this is a step light for under the step right there for a night. This is another exterior light above the passenger door. And this is the battery disconnect. The battery disconnect should always be on. Never should you turn it off. If you turn it off, you will get zero power to the coach and your batteries will not be charging. So let's go over these buttons right here with the awning. First, we're just gonna actually just push that button and the awning is gonna come out by itself. Remember this awning is not windproof and it's not rainproof. So use your good judgment. Watch out for any trees when you are using this awning. And it'll simply stop by itself and then you can turn on the awning lights, which are gonna be right above here. They are LED lights, but it will light up pretty bright at night. To turn off, turn off your lights before pulling in your awning, simply push the awning in button and the awning is gonna go in by itself. In the back passenger side of the 59G, you're gonna notice there is an ex external solar plug right here. Uh, we do not provide any ex external solar. There are a 12 volt with a cable connection right there. We have some outlets right here that are labeled. And we also have a bike rack back here. All right, in this part of the video, we're gonna learn how to put the bike rack down. There are two plastic brackets holding this thing up. One's right here and one is right here. Now we need to be careful when taking these brackets off for the bike rack because they can break. So we want to grab both hands. You're going to want to put one hand right here and put your finger right here. And with your thumbs, you're actually going to gently pull this guy back. Then we're going to go over here to the other side. We're going to put our hand right here. And we're going to gently pull back and that's going to release the locking mechanisms. Next, we're gonna come over here to this hanging one right here. We're actually gonna take this off. Don't lose this screw like I almost did. We're gonna actually push this out. We're gonna actually lower this plastic piece so we can actually get this out. We're gonna lift this up. We're gonna drop this down and we're gonna immediately put the screw back in its place. Now you can adjust this to the height of, for your bicycle. However, just make sure you don't lose these right here. After that, we'll screw this back on and then you can configure how to put your bikes in here. 
and this will help hold your bikes right here. And also this bracket right here with the tightening loops right here. And we're gonna put it back and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna actually put it back up. We're gonna redo this guy. Take this guy off. And we're gonna be, this is gonna enable us to slide this guy just underneath the bracket and push it back up like so. And then we will look for this guy. Here. All right, there we go. Make sure it's in there secure, and then we're going to tighten it nice and tight, like so. And then we're going to put these plastic brackets back on. Nice and easy with both hands, really slow, just snap it in. And then we're going to go to the other side. Snap it right back in and we're back in business with the bike rack about. All right, we're gonna come into the front of the coach in the driver's chair right here. And we're gonna take a look at some configurations on the seat. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice is the parking brake, which goes up and push the button and it goes down. Um, they got several um, adjustable stuff for the seat. You can adjust it to however you want. You got some right here and one right here. Now, for the backing of your seat, you can actually pull this guy. You're gonna pull this corner right here. This corner lifts up. So that's gonna help you adjust your back to get you more comfortable in driving. Now on the opposite side of this seat is gonna be another one of these, which you're gonna pull up, and that's actually gonna be able to swivel your seat back and forth like so. You can only swivel the seats around when you are stationary, not when you're driving. It will prevent the vehicle from starting, so don't do it. All right, we're gonna cut real quick and we're gonna go to the other side and we're gonna show you how to put the windshield blinds on and the passenger and driver side side windows. Inside your coach, usually we store the visors for the windows above the driver and passenger seat. Real easy. Gonna pull it out of this plastic bag right here we'll set that right there in this one we have two different pieces these are going to be for the side windows so let's take a look here we go so this is what it's going to look like it's got little magnets on here we're simply going to take it this guy That's it, that's gonna cover your side window and that's gonna give you more privacy at night. Now we're gonna do the two, the front uh, window, the windshield, and that's gonna be two pieces. One piece is gonna go on the driver's side over here and then it's gonna Velcro in the middle and then the other one will go on the side. So let's take a look at those real quick. All right, so in the other bag, you're gonna have the windshield covers, which is two pieces and you'll see the Velcro right here actually just gonna go right in your windshield like this and actually move it over you can move the mirror and the mirror is gonna help stabilize it right there <clears throat> the next one you're gonna match up the velcro pieces which is right here in the middle and you're actually just gonna set it on the passenger side and adjust the mirror For the visor to stay in like so for the windshield covers always make sure that the silver lining is facing out so the Sun can reflect off of it all right we're in the front cab still of the 59g Travato to adjust your seat to go forward and backwards there is a bar in between your legs right here and you kind of just lift it up and you can adjust forward and backwards next we have this armrest to adjust the armrest there is a little dial under here now what that's gonna do it's gonna help if you move it up or down it'll help you move this guy and adjust it to whatever your elbow needs to be set at okay we're gonna go ahead and turn the vehicle on right now 
All right, one thing we're gonna take a look at is we're gonna take a look at this rear view mirror. It is a camera. So what we're gonna do, to, if you want it on camera, you leave it right there. Now let's say you have some children in the back and you wanna see them, you're gonna go ahead and turn that and that's gonna turn it into a regular mirror. Now we're gonna go back to the camera real quick and we're gonna show you some adjustments on here. So there's three buttons right here. Uh, there's the first one is gonna be for brightness and to adjust the camera and use the arrows to adjust the brightness, uh, whatever you want it at. If you go ahead and press that button again, you can adjust the camera up or down to get a better view of what's behind you. Now there's also a camera on the front radio panel too that will go into camera mode once you put it in reverse. Now the stereo is a Pioneer stereo. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's probably just like the one in your vehicle. Um, if you hit this arrow right here, you can barely see it. Uh, to give you all your options, radio, Bluetooth, audio, Pandora, Spotify, iPod, Sirius XM. Now, Pandora, Spotify, and Sirius XM radio may not be op uh, operable. Uh, they might not be connected, um, so just remember that. If you scroll up, you got an auxiliary, car sources, another camera view source off, and power off. All your configurations right here are just like a regular vehicle. You got the air conditioning, AC push, and push for circulation, and then you can adjust to whatever you want out right here. Your hazard lights are right here. We're never gonna touch the um, ESC. We're gonna just leave it as it is. Uh, these are some fog lights right here, and then you can actually lock the doors with this button right here. You got a 12 volt connection right here, as well as a USB port right here. Now underneath by the key for the driver, you also have an auxiliary. Let's see, can you see that? There's an auxiliary and also a USB port for the driver to charge their phone. On the steering wheel, we have the control panel. We got uh, all the Bluetooth configurations, volume buttons and stuff like that. You got your windshield wipers right here. You got your blinkers and your lights right here. And then also your cruise control right here. Um, that's pretty much it for the front cab other than your mirror configurations. Now, each side door has two mirrors. One is a regular mirror, one is a blind spotter. There are four arrows on this dial. So the two on the left are for the driver and the two on the right are for the passenger. So you can just go ahead and use the joystick and it will adjust to whatever you want it at, okay? You also got two buttons right here if you're wondering what these are. These actually close the mirrors for when you are stationary, okay? You can open that back up once you start getting moving and you're good to go. There's also a lock right here. Now, let's talk about this key right here for the everything, all the locks. There are three buttons on here. One is an unlock, one is a lock, and then there's another one right here. So we're gonna go ahead and shut the doors right now and we're gonna talk about these buttons. So the key is gonna look like this. You're gonna push this little button for the key to come out like a switchblade. And then we have these three buttons. So lock, unlock, I'm sorry, unlock, lock, and then another one. Now this bottom one is for the side door and the back doors to be unlocked. For example, right now the doors are unlocked. If we press lock, all the doors, including the slide, will lock. However, if you push unlock, only the driver and the passenger side will unlock. To unlock the sliding door and the back doors, you're gonna hold this button down and it's gonna unlock those. All right, that's gonna conclude our 2022 Winnebago Travato 59G walkthrough. I hope this video was very informative for you. And remember, I'm Dave from Family RV, where you can look us up at www.familyrv.com for all your rental, sales, and service needs.